So today what we're going to do is install folding at home, but not only that, we're going to install it on the lowest spec computer we can find. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. So today on Techno Dad Life, what we're going to do is install Folding at Home in a container on a netbook. And so this is not any netbook, but this is a AMD C60 netbook, which has a dual core, one gigahertz processor. And so our goal today is to not only install it, but let's see if it can run. And so first what I'm going to do is show you what we have up and running now. So if we take a look at this, so this is our Bevy computer. And so it has a dual core Celeron N3050 running at 1.3 gigahertz. And we've been running this for one day and 16 hours. If we look at our folding at home, so far we've done one unit of work and we're on our second unit. And so basically what i mean by unit here is how many projects one unit of project and it's broken up into smaller bits if you look on there so it's been running about 1.83 days in order to do that and let's just take a look at the interface here for a second before we move on so in this section right here is where we decide what we're actually going to do and so if we click on that down arrow so it has different categories and if we leave it on any disease, it does COVID-19, or if you want to do one of the other diseases, that's where you would do that. This section tells us uh, how much of the unit or how much of the work unit we've finished. And so here we can see it's about 24%. And it's been working 1.83 days, and I got 800 points. So what you can do is actually sign up for accounts and actually get credit and you can compare yourself against other people. Since we are trying to do this on the lowest powered computer that we have, uh, it's not really useful for us because we're not going to actually have that many units compared to somebody who has a much more expensive machine. In this section, we get to decide how much power or how much of the computing power we're going to be using. Uh, if it's doing it while I'm working or idle and to stop folding if we want to. Finally, in this last section, it tells us which project we're actually working on and what it's for. And so just one little thing about this web control panel and Chrome. And so what I found with Chrome is after a while, the, it will just seem like the program's not working but it's actually just Chrome, the memory buffer is filled up and you have to clear the browser cache and then it will work fine again. Otherwise you can do what I did and open a Firefox uh, web browser and it shows it automatically. It will go to sleep but you just can tap on it and it will open up again. Finally if you go to Portainer and you find your folding at home you can click on the piece of paper there and if you scroll down it will show you the processes that you've completed up to this point. So next, let's open up a new browser window and we'll log into our uh, netbook and we will install Folding at Home. And you can actually use these same directions to install Folding at Home on any computer. So here you can see we have a netbook AMD 6, C60 APU with Radeon graphics. And let's see how that's rated. If we go to Passmark, and check out the AMD C C60, it's rated at 328. And if we scroll down even further, uh, you can see the average modern CPU is in the 14,000, whereas the C60 is at 328. Let's just say it's not the most powerful computer in the world. If we go back to OpenMe Vault, we need to open Docker and Portainer. We need to go to the stack section and click add stack. Now we're going to open up a new tab, type Linux server slash folding at home, and then go to the Docker Hub page. Scroll down 
And if we look at the supported architectures, uh, it actually, if we look right there, it's actually only for x86 64-bit computers. So this image is not for Raspberry Pis. Next, we're going to scroll down and go to the Docker Compose. And in a minute, what we're gonna do is copy and paste this into Portainer, and we just have to change a few variables. And so for our variables, uh, basically we have our, where we're going to access the GUI. Uh, we don't actually need this one. Our PUID, our PGID, change our time zone, and then have a config folder where the data is going to be stored. If we look at application setup, again, we say, see, there's where we're going to access our server. There's no password required for this. And if you use GPUs, they're only active when it's medium or higher. Uh, and for our hardware acceleration, you can, AMD is supported automatically. And to do NVIDIA, uh, it takes some effort, effort, but there's the directions. I don't have any NVIDIA hardware at home, so I'm not gonna be doing that right now. But if you follow the directions, it looks pretty easy. So we go back up to Docker Compose. We're going to copy this, paste that into our stacks, and then up above, we're gonna call this folding at home. Scroll down. So of our different things here, we're going to download the Linux server folding at home. The container name is going to be folding at home. Our PUID is 1000. We're going to change this to 100. We're going to change our time zone and we're going to make an app data folder. And then to access our server, we're going to do it on port 7396. And then our restart policy is unless stopped. So our PUID is 1000, our PGID is 100. Our time zone for me is America slash New York. So to find the path to our folder, we need to go to shared folders, and then we're going to click next to relative path on the down arrow, columns, and then absolute path if you don't have it. And then right here, it will tell you the absolute path to your disk. So we're going to type this into our portainer. Then once we've done that, we're gonna type in app data for our app data folder, and then slash folding at home. So now all our folding at home data will be stored in our app data folder inside of the folding at home folder. And then everything else we can leave as is. Now, the one problem I see that might happen with this is it does have an older version of Radeon graphics, which could cause a problem if it's run at medium or high settings, because then the program will start trying to use that GPU power. But because it's the graphics are so old, I'm pretty sure the driver will not work, but we'll see in a second. Now we're going to scroll down, disable access control and then de deploy, and so then that will download and start the image up. And just to show you why I'm wearing so many clothes today, so this is a sunroom, so it's an uninsulated space with lots of windows. So it is snowing outside today, so it's probably like 30 degrees Fahrenheit in this room, or like minus two Celsius. Once that's done, you'll see a folding at home folder in stacks, and then click on containers. And you can see there folding at home is running. We're gonna click on the piece of paper there and that will bring up the logs. It's on the first step of 500,000. So, so next what we're going to do is copy our IP address, paste in our IP address, put colon 7396, hit enter. So the web UI doesn't seem to be opening, but if we go back to Portainer, it seems that everything else is okay. So let us copy this IP address and open up a Firefox browser. So here's our other unit running and it's on port uh, 117, IP address 117. Paste this in and here you can see we're at 111 and this is actually started folding. 
So contrary to what I first thought, you can do folding at home on a AMD C60 1 gigahertz processor. So next I've switched this up to full power. Let's see what it does to our CPU in OpenMedia Vaults. You can see right now it's running, it's been running between 50 and 52% at full power. Uh, it's only using 21% of less than two gigabytes of RAM there. So I would say this would be 100% success for running folding at home and the lowest power computer I could find. So this one is definitely worthwhile to do if you wanna help fight disease. And make sure you take care, do all your safety precautions, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.